What's up guys, it's Michael here and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. Today we have a brand new Skyrim Remastered build brought to life with an exciting fleshed out backstory and redesigned roleplaying. This is the Cryomancer, the build that you voted for. The Cryomancer doesn't need to tell anyone to freeze, instead he stops enemies dead in their tracks when he unleashes a barrage of teeth chattering devastation upon them. He uses his newfound arcane talents to masterfully cast all kinds of ice projectiles at his foes, manipulating blizzards and paralyzing enemies before they can utter a word of protest, and then he comes charging in with a mighty frozen battle axe, dropping the cold shoulder on everything and everyone that gets in his way. The Cryomancer is covered head to toe in heavy plates of armor, and the secrets inside of all this remain a mystery to the people of Skyrim. Some say he is an ice wraith trapped in a man's body, others say he is nothing but the reanimated remains of a frozen fool, but all rumors and stories end the same. When you meet the Cryomancer, you do not challenge him unless you're looking for a battle you'll never forget. As a Nord with traditional values, the Cryomancer will stop at nothing to prove his worth, and the fact that he's alive is something he will never take for granted. The Cryomancer Manta also wears a powerful ring that allows him to cast a special frost magic spell for a sensational damage to cost ratio. This ring is known as Azadal's Ring of Arcana, and if you're looking to get your hands on it or get it on your hands, you'll want to head over to Camelworks channel as he's just released a guide on where to find it and everything it does. We highly recommend subscribing for his visually amazing guides and top kek puns. The link to his video and channel will be in the description. Don't forget to head on down to the comments of this video where you can vote for which Skyrim Build we remaster next. Remember, you always vote by thumbing up which of our comments you want to win. Your choices this week are the Druid and the Druid. Timestamps for each part of the video can be found in the description. Now it's time to jump straight in with the Cryomancer's race, standing stone, and stats. The Cryomancer is a Nord born in Skyrim, and as a Nord, he has a natural resistance to frost. 50% frost resistance to be exact. His other ability that he can use once per day is called Battle Cry, and this sends targets fleeing for 30 seconds. The Cryomancer's race gives him a natural boost of plus 10 to two handed, as well as plus five to smithing, both of which will be useful for this build. The Cryomancer will want to spend his early stages of the game using the Lover Stone. This will allow him to level all his skills faster until you meet the requirements for his essential perks. After this though, the Atronarch Stone gives a valuable upgrade of 50 points to Magicka, as well as 50% spell absorption. This this is well worth the investment despite the 50% reduction in Magicka regen. His stat spread will be 50% health, 40% Magicka, and 10% stamina. Even though projectile spells make up a fair chunk of the Cryomancer's playstyle, he'll often find himself swinging in the thick of the battle, so 50% health will really help in that regard with keeping him alive. 40% Magicka is a given as he will be using a variety of different spells, some of which are quite expensive to cast. Lastly, 10% stamina gives a little boost for when the Cryomancer wants to perform power attacks. The Cryomancer was born in a small village in the Falkreath hold of Skyrim during the Second Era. His mother was a beautiful Falkreath local, and his father was a retired soldier hailing from the northern reaches of Morthal. Despite growing up in the lush green expanses of Falkreath, the Cryomancer heard many tales of his father's adventures. The Cryomancer learned that his lineage on his father's side was filled with great men, warriors who will be forever remembered in song and literature. The Cryomancer adopted the values of these men, and spent the majority of his childhood striving to prove his strength to his father, but no matter how many local sparring competitions he won, and no matter how many pounds he could carry during training, it never seemed to be enough to win his father's approval. Whatever feat he accomplished, his father just wasn't that impressed. His father believed that the Cryomancer had been softened naturally by living in Falkreath, and had no idea how strong Nords were in other areas of Skyrim. Falkreath's climate was cozy, and he doubted the ability of his son to perform so well in harsher elements. It was at the turning of autumn during the year he had finally come of age when the dark red leaves fell and gave way to winter's biting breath. The Cryomancer decided he was old enough to really prove his worth, to go out and do something only a real warrior could. The Drow Mountains loomed on the southern horizon, their snow-covered peaks breaching the clouds and spanning into the heavens. One of his favorite tales was of his father's close encounter with a group of ice wraiths. The Cryomancer was determined to find one, to harvest its teeth, and to return as a man with his own grisly tail. Without a word to anyone, he threw on some furs, packed some provisions, borrowed one of the family's many battle axes, and headed on the trail. Journeying into the Drow Mountains was tough and treacherous. He was incredibly weary, his legs ached, and his breaths were strained. Hints of doubt began to seep into him as he continued onwards, plaguing his mind and tiring him further, but he clenched his fists and gritted his teeth, resolute in his task. 
On the next morning of his trek, just as the sun began to turn the sky from black to a dreary grey, the cryomancer spied a black hole in the cliff face of the snow-covered mountain. This hole was obviously a cave. He had come this far, he would have been foolish to leave it unexplored. Inside the cave, the air was still and stale. Due to the absence of wind, the only sound he could hear was the slow trickle of water running down the walls. The silence was refreshing, but simultaneously daunting. His left hand began to subconsciously stroke the blade of his axe, providing a sense of reassurance within him. The only thing allowing him to see inside was an ethereal blue glow emanating from a pool in the middle of the cavern. The cryomancer walked towards the pool and knelt down to peer into the mysterious body of water. He'd never seen water so pale and bright. He heard a shriek behind him, and then one to his left and then to his right. He leapt to his feet and drew his axe ice rates. They danced through the air towards him with terrifying grace, and as soon as they came close, began breathing frozen death in his direction. He rolled underneath the icy mist and rose behind the middle wraith. With a ferocious cry, he swung the axe at the creature's translucent body. It crumpled under the heavy blow, producing a squeal as it died. The remaining wraiths were now unrelenting and moved with much more haste, attacking him with onslaughts of frost. The cryomancer was certain he could take them on, but his limbs were alarmingly cold and the lack of circulation was affecting his grip. He raised the axe and swung horizontally, hoping to take both down in one heavy strike. The first he hit directly, slicing through the center of the wraith and sending its remains falling to the floor, but the second had just enough time to react and dipped below the swipe. His exhaustion was increasing. His chest felt like it was tearing every time he filled his lungs, and he had lost almost all sensation in his toes and his fingers. The remaining creature was now between him and the exit, and then, yet again, it came at him. The cryomancer raised his axe above his head and planted his back foot behind him to support the weight, but behind him he found no footing, and before he could react he fell into the crystal blue pool. He let out all of his precious air in a panicked cry and became trapped inside the liquid. He could feel the cold climbing up his limbs towards his core, freezing him alive. He was immobilized and felt suspended by some kind of strange force. Unable to move, his vision began to blur as he passed out from the shock of the cold. He woke up floating in the ethereal pool, and as he pulled himself out, he could hardly think. He felt blood pumping through his veins, what felt like the first time in centuries, and as he breathed air into his lungs, his vision became sharper, and he became more aware of sounds and the feeling of the air on his skin. His brain was incredibly scrambled and he had no idea how much time had passed. It took him a good two minutes to fully remember where he was and what he was doing here, and somehow he didn't even feel cold or dead for that matter. He stumbled clumsily from the cave, heading outside and down to flutter land. Before he could get his bearings, he was captured by soldiers in red cloaks and loaded into the back of a wagon. After escaping Helgen, the Cryomancer is ultimately lost and confused. Everything he knew about Skyrim has changed, and 1,000 years have passed. While he comes to terms with the world around him and remembers more about his previous life, he will continue to uphold traditional Nordic values. Regardless of where his travels take him, he will never feel cold, and he will be drawn to climbing mountains and seeking out monsters to kill far away from civilized towns and cities. When garbed in his armor, people will notice something otherworldly about his appearance, and even just his presence, leading to rumors that he may be an ice wraith spirit in the body of a man. While he will be capable of adapting to the present day relatively quickly, the surreal circumstances of his existence will always be suspicious to the more observant. He will also be drawn to frost magic and finds that since waking up he has a natural talent with frost spells. Therefore, in regards to factions, he will seek out the College of Winterhold, not only to learn frost spells, but also in an attempt to learn more about his past and potentially what forces of nature led to his peculiar experience. Despite being altered by his encounter in the Drow Mountains, the Crymancer still holds his father's values and believes in proving himself to be the greatest warrior he can be. So when he discovers his true purpose as the Dragonborn, he will not hesitate to undergo the main storyline. He'll also side with the Dawnguard in the Dawnguard DLC, which is where he will get the head piece for his armor choice, and he can potentially align with the companions as they share his philosophies of strength and fighting prowess. Other than that, he is largely unaware of the political landscape of Skyrim in the Fourth Era. He missed a lot of time in stasis, but his Nord beliefs will likely lend themselves to the Stormcloaks as well as his negative experience when first encountering the Imperials.
So now that we know a little bit about this time traveling Iceman's origins and his role playing, let's take a look at how this will translate to his skills, spells, perks, and overall playstyle. The fundamental skills of this build are destruction, two handed heavy armor, smithing, and enchanting. With this skill set, the Cryomancer will be able to utilize the very best in arcane weapons and armor to be a force in battle while firing off devastatingly cool destruction spells. The Cryomancer will use a few spells, all of which come under the frost damage category. A staple spell of his will be the adept level destruction destruction spell frost cloak this spell surrounds him with a wall of frost dishing out frost damage to anyone who gets too close the spell will work effectively in the background while the cryomancer mows down foes with his two-handed battle axe before charging in with the axe however he will have a variety of projectile spells to use to his advantage if he wants to the apprentice level spell freeze which becomes available when you find azadal's ring of arcana fires an icy projectile to deal damage and slow enemies dramatically similarly there's the expert level icy spear which works in the same way except that it drops the slow for more damage. Then there is the Adept level Ice Storm, which is a slow but larger projectile that damages targets within its range. Lastly, we have Blizzard. This master level spell takes a while to cast and costs a lot of magicka, but on the rare occasion that it is cast, it acts like a massive whirlwind, damaging enemies per second with a large area of effect. With these spells explained, now let's look at his perk choices, starting off with Destruction. After spending a thousand years frozen in an Ice Wraith's lair, it'd be disappointing for anyone to come out on the other side without some kind of affinity to Frost Magic. Never fear though, because the Cryomancer's Destruction abilities will make his Frost spell spells crispy and fresh. From this skill tree, you'll want to invest in the second branch up to Deep Freeze, the fourth branch up to Master Destruction, and the final branch up to Impact. The fourth branch will ensure the door is open to all the spells you could need, while notable perks like Augmented Frost and Deep Freeze offer huge benefits to the Cryomancer's specific needs. Augmented Frost will make all Frost spells 50% more powerful, while Deep Freeze paralyzes low health targets hit with Frost damage. As the Cryomancer specializes in Frost damage, these perks will definitely come in handy. Next up, we have Two Handed. When he's not firing off frozen projectiles, the Cryomancer will be making lumber of his enemies with his giant battle axe. His valiant effort against the Ice Wraiths proves his aptitude with this weapon, and thankfully, even after a thousand years, the Ice preserved his ability to operate heavy equipment. From this skill tree, you'll want to take the middle branch, taking the right side via Devastating Blow and finishing with Sweep. Devastating Blow adds 25% bonus damage to standing power attacks and also gives the chance to decapitate enemies. After this comes Heavy Armor. The Crymanta is a Nord who doesn't mess around with light apparel. He's in danger more often than not and he wants to be protected. From this skill tree, we suggest taking every perk on the left and everything up to Tower of Strength on the right. The left branch will offer some useful maneuverability. With Conditioning, you won't be slowed by Heavy Armor and with Cushioned, you'll take half the usual amount of falling damage. So when you're out scaling the Slippery Mountain Slope of Skyrim, you'll have nothing to worry about. On the right side, Tower of Strength will give you 50% less stagger when fully decked out in heavy armor, so combined with Frost Cloak and that monstrous axe, you'll hit enemies like the Polar Express. What kind of Nord doesn't like to get hands-on with his equipment? No real Nord, says the Cryomancer. From the smithing skill tree, we recommend investing in Arcane Blacksmith and then the right hand branch up to Ebony Smithing. With Ebony Smithing, you'll be able to maintain and improve your gear, and thanks to Arcane Blacksmith, you'll even be able to do so after enchanting this gear. Obviously, this means you'll be enchanting your weapons and armor, so from the enchanting skill tree, go ahead and take the left branch up to Frost Enchanter and the middle branch all the way up to Extra Effect. Other than skill improving enchantments like Fortify Destruction and Fortify Two Hands, Handed, enchantments will allow you to fully roleplay the Cryomancer by bumping up that Frost Resistance. The Frost Enchanter perk will make those Frost-related augmentations 25% stronger, while Extra Effect will let you put two enchantments on each piece of equipment. As for how to best utilize these skills, perks, and spells, the optimal playstyle for the Cryomancer will obviously revolve around firing off whatever Frost spells he can from a distance before surrounding himself in Frost Cloak and charging fearlessly with his Battle Axe into his opponents. The Cryomancer may not feel the cold, hell he may even be able to swim in the sea of ghosts without shivering. But every warrior needs armor, and this cold customer does not disappoint. The Crymancer will wear a full set of heavy style rim armor except for the helmet. In its place, we have the Dawnguard full helm. This set's aesthetic nails the Crymancer's style, and the pale blue plates are reminiscent not only of his choice of spells, but also of his time.
time in the ominous Ice Wraith Cavern. All of these pieces, as well as any necklace of your choice, should be enhanced with enchantments like Frost Resistance, Fortify Destruction, Fortify Two-Handed, and any other skills you may need to improve. With this, he'll wear Azadal's Ring of Arcana. This ring grants you the ability to use the Freeze Spell. For weapon choice, the Cryomancer will go with a Star Rim Battle Axe not only to match the armor's aesthetic, but also for massive damage, especially when given a Frost Damage enchantment. The second enchantment slot is up to you. Soul Trap may be useful or even paralyzed to really freeze your enemies where they stand. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this build. There you have it guys, that was the Cryomancer. As always, the build we remaster next is up to you. So if you want to have your say about which one comes next, slide on down to the comments and cast your vote. In the description, you can find timestamps to help you navigate throughout the video, as well as links to our social media accounts and Camelworks channel where you'll be able to find the Azadal's Ring guide. Your choices for next week's build are the Druid and the Druid, so get voting. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'm Michael and I look forward to nerding out with you again next time.